Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus today. I am Trace and I'm here with my friend, Dr. Ian O'Neill. And today we're gonna talk to Ian about, well, it's not gonna be a normal DNews Plus episode. So we're gonna talk to Ian O'Neill about how he got the doctor in the Ian O'Neill part, right? Oh, it's exciting. <laughs> it's gonna be really cool, it's a long actually. Time ago. So make sure you subscribe. This is episode one of three in our conversation with Ian about very specific and awesome sun stuff. Ian, uh, you studied the sun, well, a very specific part, which we'll get into, but you studied the sun, correct? I did. So this all started because uh, Ian and I were sitting down to lunch, and as you know, if you are a regular D News Plus watcher or even a D News watcher, uh, I just got back from Svalbard not long ago. Uh, very cool. It was super cool. Mm -hmm. But Ian has also been to Svalbard. I have. And it was funny because uh, I was looking at your videos, of course, of the Seed Vault. And of course, when I was there, it was back in 2002. I think they were only just thinking about building the thing. So it wasn't around. So when I saw your videos, it was so nice to see that landscape again. It's very different. Yeah. It's, it's like a desert, but with... With reindeer snow and, and snow. reindeer. Yeah. yeah, reindeer. There was a lot, of, a lot reindeer. of reindeer. We got really excited because we filmed some reindeer, and then we went back to the hotel and we told them, hey, we filmed some reindeer. And they're like, yeah, they're everywhere. They're what like sheep. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it'd be like if you said, hey, we filmed a squirrel. People would be like, oh, yes. Squirrel, yeah. they're everywhere. But did you actually eat any reindeer when you I were did. there? I did. It was good. Yeah, it was good. It, it was, was really good. It, I mean, I Lucky grew up in the Midwest, so there's like venison. It tastes like oh, venison. Yeah. You know, it was good. It was really cool. Good time. So we talked about it because I was there to go to the seed vault, but I also went to the place where you did a lot of your research during uh, your master's program. Is that right? Yeah. So back in 2002, um, part of my study was in Svalbard. So basically it was the final semester that I had, because I was studying in, in Wales in Aberystwyth University, we had an exchange program, an Erasmus exchange program, which is an EU-funded event so mm, I'm brexit yeah brexit mm. um, so i'm very proud to say that i was a european student and i had this opportunity amazing opportunity to study in svalbard probably one of the most extreme places in the world and yeah and i was there to study the upper atmosphere um basically the interaction between the sun and the earth and that happens at high altitudes and you can basically see this but through aurora so basically the charged particles from the sun from the solar wind will hit the upper atmosphere create aurora could be create these beautiful lights i mean it, uh, it was we it was couldn't see it. It, was, yeah. it was all day there i didn't get to see it. you're just bragging now it, of course yeah. i didn't see a sunset for a week i, I was lucky because i was up there in the january and i stayed until like the may so i had i had both i had 24 hour dark and blizzards which was kind of scary and also very weird. And then I had 24 hour light, which was just probably the worst. I, I couldn't sleep. It was oh, just, it was, it was a nightmare. It was okay. I, I didn't. I like just went it. to the pub first. <laughs> So throughout this episode, you're going to hear Ian and I talk a lot about the sun. You're going to hear words like corona. You're going to hear words like plasma. Um, we think we might want to come back at some point and do like a full sun explainer and talk all about all the different parts of the sun. Uh, but plasma is what exactly? Really quick. Basically, charged particles uh, on the sun, lots of different elements that are in the sun, mainly hydrogen, of course. But they're basically, it's basically superheated gas, yeah. highly energetic gas, kind of radioactive as well. But ultimately, it's just a hot soup of hot gas. Cool. A hot soup of hot gas. Super hot gas. So you're going to hear that. You're going to hear us talk about the corona, and you're going to hear us talk about all sorts of other cool stuff. We'll try and explain them as best we can as we go through. But if you do want to Google what the sun looks like uh, inside of it, it's really awesome. So when you're studying the solar physics, how does that get you into a PhD program? You're just like, you specialize in a very specific type of solar physics? Yeah, so... When I was doing my master's, of course, I was interested in what's happening at the end of the chain, if you like. So I'm, I was interested in the product of the space weather. So basically all these particles and really cool magnetic effects that were coming from the sun, I was only really interested in what was happening in the upper atmosphere of the Earth because that's kind of important and we'll discuss more on that later. But I, what I suddenly got very interested in in my master's year was where does all this come from? I mean, what actually causes these space weather events? What actually creates these beautiful lights? And you can't really pick a better place than Svalbard to study this because there's no light pollution. When it's a clear night, these aurora would take up the entire sky. So you kind of get a little bit emotional about the whole thing. And then you start investigating as to, you know, the science behind it. How does it actually work? So then I had the opportunity to follow up my experiences in Svalbard, um, going back to the University of Aberystwyth, where I did my undergrad as well. So I basically stayed in Wales for the best part of 10 years. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to stop being a student. And then 
I got the opportunity to do a PhD, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll hang around. And so that PhD was actually in coronal physics, which was actually okay. a lot closer to the sun, actually in the lower atmosphere of the corona. So it's a lower atmosphere of the sun, which is called the corona. And that's basically the start of the chain. That's where space weather events happen, and they basically get transported out to Earth. Got it. So when you think of the sun, I don't know about you guys out there, but when I think of the sun, sometimes I get just kind of a shortcut and I'm like, oh, it's just a big ball of gas. But in reality, it's got layers, it's got an atmosphere, The uh, it's not a solid, it's, it's a big ball of incandescent nuclear fusion, but it's also, it's got its distinctive layers. It's got a core, it's got inner layers, it's got outer layers, and it's got an atmosphere. So you were studying the lower atmosphere. Lower atmosphere, so it was just above like the uh, chromosphere, as it's called, which itself is a little bit above the photosphere. And the photosphere is kind of famous because that's where we see the light coming from. So I was interested in like the lower corona and to where the chromosphere is. And the chromosphere is just a little bit above the photosphere, which is kind of famous because if you look, go outside and look at the sun, you can see the photosphere. That's the light that we can see. But I was more interested in just above the photosphere into the into the chromosphere. And from the chromosphere, you go further up and you hit a transition region where the gases of the corona suddenly go from a few thousand degrees to millions of degrees. Why, why do they do that? This is the thing. So that's what I was funded for. And this is where most guys in solar astronomy and solar science will get funded because we're trying to work out why the corona is so hot. It doesn't make any sense. It's like having a light bulb, and the further you move away from the light bulb, the hotter your hand gets. Yeah, that, that doesn't would, make, that that breaks, makes no sense at all. That breaks all kind of laws. So basically my research ended up focusing on how this gas is heated to those kind of temperatures away from the sun. And solar astronomers have been trying to work this out for like the last 50 years. And only now, with some really, really cool observ- observatories that are actually looking at the sun right now, really high definition views, we're actually able to see some of the mechanisms that could be heating the corona. So it's a really exciting time to be in research. But then again, it's also kind of cool to be in science media to actually report on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you're thinking about the sun for the remainder of this conversation, guys, think about it as not just a ball of gas that's a, a one thing. It's actually all of this different intricacies. And, and Ian, you're just looking at the coronal loops the and things. The tiniest, tiniest. The tiny little thing. And the, and, the and sun is humongous. So how big are these things that you're studying, like one of these? Well, these things are huge, and they, they can be quite small, but they can also be quite big, so, so to the point where you can fit several Earths inside the loop. So oh. these things are big, and they arch out into space, and they carry the plasma with it, almost like a, uh, a fire hose. So it's almost like you know the, this uh, plasma is traveling around the hose, and as the plasma travels around these magnetic field lines, they get heated. So that's when you see like these really cool images of the sun, especially by NASA's uh, Solar Dynamics Observatory, when it looks really close at these regions you see these amazing loops they're just like beautiful radiating glowing hot loops and you can have many of them they sometimes they're very active they can you can actually see particles well like flows of particles going around these loops and you can see where they're being heated sometimes they collide and, and reconnect sometimes they flare they, they're incredible things but yeah as you say it's a tiny 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 part of solar physics that we're looking at and that's kind of goes for all science you know researchers will look at their tiny little bit of um, of science and it will expand out to a wider community if you just kind of look beyond that topic but with this yeah it was a small area coronal physics is is a really cool field. I really enjoyed it when I was studying it. Super cool. So we're going to talk a bit about how we look at the sun in the next episode. So make sure you stick around. If you have any questions uh, for Dr. O'Neill, you can find him over on Twitter at Astro Engine. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. And thanks so much for watching DNews Plus today. Make sure you come back tomorrow for how we look at the sun with Dr. Ian O'Neill.